So on to the second part of the Winnie the Pooh square and making Winnie's face. I very, very nearly made a slip knot on my yarn before I started the video and then realised we're going straight into a magic ring, so we don't need to bother with that. Um, it just it doesn't happen very often, does it? I showed you how to make a magic ring back in the second part of the first square when we made um, the Mickey motif. Um rather than doing the circles as the magazines say because they often leave a gap in the center which we didn't want with the mickey face i will show you again how to do it now i just want to make people aware that this is really complicated to film because i have to hold my hands at strange ankles ankles <laughs> i don't know where that come from angles i have to hold my hands at strange angles sorry um so yes, I will try my best, but it's just not the easiest. So we're using these two fingers. Obviously, I am a right-handed person, so you will need to reverse this if you are left-handed. Using these two fingers, you want to make sure you've got a good end to weave in there. So you've got at least 15 centimetres. You want to hang that over the front of these two. We're then going to use our thumb to hold that yarn and to pinch it so it stays there. Using like a pinchy action you can pick up the yarn at the back so not that end, the short end. So use your pinchy fingers to grab that yarn at the back and then we are going to move it around the front of those fingers and we're going to go over the other side so once you get to the top turn your hand towards you and this is where it gets awkward for me to film and then rather than just going straight over we don't want to do that we want to make a cross so we're crossing over this way we are then going to use our ring finger to hold those two ends down. So we end up with something that looks like this. I really want to adjust the camera, but I can't, this is so awkward. Here we go, that's a bit better. So we're taking our hook and we're going, we're treating these as four points. So we've got top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. You want to put your hook under the top left. You're then going to go through and then you're going to turn it so you hook the top left yarn, pull that through. Turn your hook towards you so you end up with a twist in your yarn. Do you see? You're then going to go back over and you want to pick up the top left again and then pull that one through the loop you've just made and that is your magic ring. From here you can remove your fingers and you will end up with something that looks like this. Now my first action once I've done a magic ring you can see that this non-working yarn piece is threaded in through the circle so it doesn't need to be there i always like to pick that one out just to get it out of the way and you can see it just looks exactly the same it's just separate to the circle now and then we can pull on our working yarn and that will tighten that one up it doesn't matter how big your circle is in the middle, that one will get bigger as you make the next set of stitches. It can get smaller by you pulling the non-working yarn if you wish. But we do need to stitch in through that circle, so make sure you've got that room at the moment. So, well done. That is probably, I think I said in the first video that we made, the most complicated crochet stitch you can do. Um, when I first started crocheting I immediately 
started with amigurumi and making toys. So the magic circle was the first thing that I ever learnt. Um, and from there, crochet seemed quite simple. Um, I'm sure you will get that because it is quite complicated. Anyway, let's move on to round one. So the first thing we need to do is to chain one. We are then going to do stitches into the loop. I don't know if you remember me showing you last time how to include the non-working yarn within the stitch that you're covering it up, but I will do this now just to make sure it's tidier. So rather than just grabbing this one and just stitching into the ring, if you hold them both together, it will incorporate both into the stitch. So we need to do eight double crochets into the loop. This can get a bit, I don't want to say complicated, but just awkward because the loop moves up and down and it's just frustrating. Um, but just try your best, I'm sure you can do it. So we're going under both of them and picking up a loop. And then I'm passing those two back and pulling down to make sure that both the loops on the hook are the same size. We're then yarning over and pulling through and we've done one. Repeat it again for two. Three. Oh. Four. five, six, seven, and eight. So once you finish that, it will look like this, which let's be honest, it looks a mess. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull on your non-working yarn, just slowly, don't do it too quick because stuff might end up getting hooked up together and we don't want that. Once you get to the middle, you can see that's starting to form a circle now. Pull it as tight as you can because we don't really want a hole in the middle. If it comes looser, it's absolutely fine. We will just tighten it up um, once we have finished making the face. For the next round, unlike the granny squares where there are gaps um, between some of the stitches so we don't carry on going round this one, if you want to still incorporate it in your stitches, you can. Um, I'm not going to because I want to be able to pull that one tighter and knot it at the end so I can uh, make sure that that circle doesn't come undone. So the next part is we're going to do two double crochets into each stitch. So make sure you count back eight. That first V there where your loop is coming out of, that is your first stitch that you're counting from. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That very small stitch there is my first one. So I need to go in through here oh sorry I'm off camera it's just this one just here and make sure you're picking up both of those V's not just the first one so I'm doing one and then two we know we started with eight single crochet sorry we know we started with eight double crochets and we're doing two into each so we know that at the end we need to have done 16 stitches so I've done two three four with two into the same stitch five six, seven, eight, 
13, 14, 15, and 16. And that is your second row complete. Now it says here for the start that we need to add a stitch marker into this first stitch here. Um, I personally don't do this because I like to count my stitches as we go. Um, it is completely up to you. If you were a beginner, I would say it is best to insert a stitch marker into this next stitch here. Um, purely because it will help you to keep count. Um, I'm not going to do it because it gets in the way and because I can count as I go around and also if I lose count I can go back on my video and check where I started <laughs> um, but completely up to you if you want to just for safety add a stitch marker into here so you know where the beginning of the row is that is completely up to you for the next round we're going to do two double crochets into the next stitch and then one double crochet into this stitch um, by the time we go all the way around we will have 24 stitches so we're going to do if I can get it in there one two and the single one three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, twelve. So we're halfway. Half of twenty four is twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24 and there we go we've gone all the way around and we have finished our third round and we should have 24 stitches if you want to just double check that you've got the 24 stitches remember just to start from this stitch here and it helps if you want to to turn it on the side like this so you can see the v's can you see the V there? And if you want to just start at this top one, just up here, just underneath your hook, if you count all the way around, you should have 24 stitches. So we're now going on to round four, very similar to the first round. We're going to do two stitches into the first stitch, and that is a DC so double crochet and then we're going to do a single DC and a single DC so just to show you we're going to do one stitch and then two stitch into the same stitch 
and then one single and two singles. So that is four stitches done. Just to show you again, one, two into the same stitch, three and four into the next stitch. So remember two into one stitch and then a single and a single. I'm going to go all the way around and the book will tell you how many you need to be doing. I'll meet you at the end. So I've got to the end of round four and now rounds five and six are exactly the same. I'm not going to tell you how many stitches we've got here but we need to do one DC in every stitch around once for round five and then every stitch around again for round six. Now we're sticking to the DC stitch so we're just going in like this, there's one stitch, two, three, four. If you go and refer back to the book, it will tell you exactly how many stitches you should have so you know how many you have to do to go all the way around. And then you go all the way around again for round six. When you've done that twice, um, I will meet you back here to tell you how to do round seven. So I've got all the way around to the end of round six. And now round seven is a bit different because it helps to shape the face. Um, my circle does appear to be curling up a bit at the moment. If I move it back into place, you can see here it's a bit, it's a bit curled up. Um, but as soon as we applique that onto the face, that will sort that out. So don't go worrying too much. I will go with you all the way around this circle because the instructions are a bit different to go all the way around. So we need to do um, one double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches to begin with. So one, two, and 10. From here is where it changes a bit because we need to do two half trebles and we need to do two in each of the next two stitches. So we're going to yarn over from the back to the front and insert into the next stitch and pull up a loop and then we're going to yarn over again and pull through all three loops on our hook. Just to show you again, back to front into that exact same stitch because we're doing two stitches into the same stitch pull up a loop so you've got three on your hook yarn over again and pull through the next one we're going to repeat that for the next stitch so yarn over in through and pull up a loop yarn over again and pull through all three yarn over again back in through the same stitch and then pull through, oh, if I can get that back on the hook, apologies, there we go, all three. So we've just done two half treble cro crochets into each of the past two stitches. We're then going to do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So back in through, there's one, two, three, and four. We're going to do two trebles into the next stitch. So yarn over, go in through and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops 
and then yarn over and pull through the next two loops and there's your one treble. We're going to do another one in the same stitch. So I've yarned over, I've gone in through that same stitch and pulled up a loop, pull through two and then pull through two. We're then going to do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches again. So one, two, three, and four. From here, we need to do another two half trebles into each of the next two stitches. So yarn over, go in through and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three, and then we're going to do the same into the same stitch to the which we've just done. And there is two half trebles complete. And we now need to do exactly the same into the next stitch. There's one half treble and another. And we're going to finish this off with doing one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We've now got to the end of this round and I'm just going to show you how to finish it off because it's the end of the final circle. We're then going to do a slip stitch in each of the next two double crochets. So we're going to go in through the next one, pull up a loop and pull that loop through for the first slip stitch and we're going to repeat that for the next one. Go in through, pull up a loop, pull through and that is your Winnie the Pooh face complete. I'm just going to pull that one slightly loose so I don't lose that. I'm just going to cut off enough so I've got enough to sew that one all the way around the face. So leave say at least 40 centimeters so you've got enough to go all the way around. The I mean I've got a really really long tail here. You need to leave enough so you can sew all the way around when you're appliqueing it onto your red square. And obviously what we can do now is just pull that loop and I'm pulling all the yarn through just to fasten that one off completely. And then we can pull that knot here and that one's completely tight now. So you can see now that where we have done those different stitches, we've got almost, a V shape at the bottom so you've got the slight V shape at the bottom and then your circular shape on top and that is Winnie the Pooh's face. Now next we have to make two ears so grab some sunflower yarn and we will continue with doing those. So we're now moving on to the ears um, and we've got to make a magic ring again. I wasn't going to show you because it genuinely hurts my hands to do this in front of a camera but I think it helps to show you because obviously it's quite a complicated one so again we're going over those two fingers on our left hand if you're right-handed and you've got the end of the yarn at the front I'm gonna drop it down I don't know if you can see it's probably just I want to say about 12 centimetres of length there that I'm letting drop below. We're then pinching with our thumb over the top, bringing the yarn around the back, up over the front. This is where the hand turns 
and we're going to make a cross and we're then using our ring finger to pinch those two together. Okay, hook under top right and pull top left under. We're then turning our hook towards us to create that loop over the hook. We're then picking up top left again and bringing it through so you've got the loop on the hook. We can then remove our fingers and it looks something like this. As I showed you before, I always pick out that one from inside the loop so it looks more like this afterwards. Now, the first instruction for this round is we are going to make six double crochets. So remember to pinch those two together so we are going over them both. We're, we're working the non-working yarn into the stitch to make it more secure. So I'm pinching the both of those two together and then I'm going under the loop and pulling that one through like that. And there we have one double crochet done. Two. Oh, it won't go through. Three. Four. Five. and six. So now I've got those six stitches done there. You can pull your non-working yarn as tight as you wish and it will leave you with a, a random blob that looks like that. Mine has actually folded over unexpectedly so I do need to sort this out off camera just bear with me. Sorry my stitch is twisted so it was basically looking like this but there we go it should look like that and then we can draw that one even tighter by pulling on the on the non-working yarn and it should look like this that's both sides to show you and then we can pull back on our working yarn to tighten that one across the the hook again from here we've only got one more round to do because these are going to be quite small so we want to do one double crochet into the first stitch. Remember to count back six so you know where your first stitch is. So I've got one that I've just covered up here. That's my first one that I've covered up. Two, three, four, five, and six. So you can see a slight V shape there. We've got one side of the stitch here and the other one here. So I need to go in through this one here. I'm aware this one's always going to be quite difficult to do and that's why it makes sense to count back because otherwise you might end up missing a stitch. So we're pulling that one through and there's our first DC of the next round. The next stitch is to do two double crochets in the next stitch. So we're now going in to this one here. So there's one double crochet and now we're going back into the same stitch and doing another double crochet. From here, we need to do two half treble crochets in each of the next two stitches. So we're yarning over, going into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, and then going through all three. And we need to repeat that again into the same stitch. And then we're going to do two more of those into this next stitch one and two. 
we need to do another two double crochets into the next stitch. One and two, and then one double crochet into the next stitch. It now says that we can fasten off and leave a tail. So we don't need to slip stitch anything to join. Um, I personally would say to do that because it's going to leave you with a smooth edge then, but it's completely up to you. Um, perhaps we should just go with what they've done and, and see how that adds up. Perhaps we need a flat edge here. I'm just going to leave it as they've said. So I'm just going to cut this one off. Remember to leave enough to sew all the way around for when you applique it on to your square. And then we're literally just going to pull that one through and tighten that one. And it has left kind of like a flat edge here. So hopefully that's what they're going for. Mine doesn't appear to be tightening. It's, it's quite loose. I am going to go back in through that stitch and... Just pull that one through to create another knot. So if you can see, I'm just hooking that one through like that. And then I'll pull it through again. And that one has tightened now, thank goodness. So that's one of my ears. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make another one. And if you wish to restart to the part of the ear part again um, it will show you how to make the next one again so now that I have completed both my ears I have gone ahead and already pinned um, my three circles onto my red square um, if you find this tricky to do the best thing to do is to refer back to part two of the first video when we appliqued the Mickey motif onto the first square um, because we will do it in exactly the same way um, I'm not happy with the shape of Winnie the Pooh's face if you google his face he doesn't have a point on his chin um, so I don't like the, the shape of his face on this square to be honest with you but that's just my personal opinion um, so I when I sew this on will probably try to to pull down on this and manipulate the shape just so it's a shape that I'm happier with. Um, I've made him with the point because obviously I'm making these videos um, to show you exactly how they're done in the magazines and I want you to be able to have the correct instructions. Um, but my mine might end up looking slightly different to yours purely because I'm going to try and just change it slightly. Um, when it comes to pinning these onto your square, I've noticed when a lot of people are putting their squares up at the end that um, their applique details aren't necessarily um, centred on the middle of the square. Um, the best thing to do, um, and we've kind of got a ruler guide with this, you can count your stitches either side um, so you can find your centre to pin your centre to but then you can also double check it with how many stitches you've got left either side how many you've got left at the bottom to compare it to um, so when I'm pinning mine I always lay my square flat on top of the front page of the magazine so I can see the square in the bottom left of the front page um, and then I can just match it up that way. So like I know that my ears here are going in the same direction as these holes um, on this diagonal here. So that will match up for me as well. Um, I think the ears, especially with the Disney characters, are a huge part, play a huge part in how the final look is. So don't go placing them too close together or too far apart because it will completely change the shape of their face and it might not be so notable blah 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 it might not be so noticeable as to who they're meant to be 
so um not much left to go here now i'm going to go off camera i'm going to use my ends here to sew these features on and then when i'm done i will come back and i will show you how to do the face so i'll see you very shortly so i have now appliqued my winnie the pooh face to my square it all seems a bit wonky at the moment it does need to be blocked and i am aware that my um face looks slightly wonky like this ear looks down on that side and to be quite honest with you i'm just gonna deal with it it's nothing that i can do about it now that it's on there well i could take it all off but i really can't be bothered and i'm sure by the time that it's all stretched out um that it'll look fine as you can see, my face is slightly rounder. I don't have as much as a point on the bottom because I didn't really like that. Um, but let's go getting into um, embroidering on the face, I guess. Now I really wish I had some embroidery thread for this because I think it does come out a much better shape um, when you're using finer thread. Um, but I don't have any of that anymore, so I will still go with the um, black yarn um, that they've said to use. It is quite thin. Um, another way of doing it is if you twist the yarn, like the opposite way to which it's been wound. Can you see the gaps in between as I'm doing that? It does come apart. And this is three ply yarn. So there's like three strands wound together there. Three, you know, like thin wound strands. I have actually tried um, already, because I was going to show you on camera how to do it, to unravel some, because as you can see, they are quite thin. Um, all I can say is this must be really, really rubbish yarn, because when you try and unravel it and just get one strand... It, it literally just breaks um so that's why i'm having to go with um the bit i've or you can see here look this is the bit that i was trying to to undo it literally just broke so we're going with what the magazine says um and there is really good detailed instructions luckily of where to start everything and they start with the nose um, so we're outlining using back stitches um, and it's around three that they tell you to work over. I'm just checking my notes now. Okay, so round three is where we're going and we want to end up going really for the most central of the face. So this would count as round one, this sort of more different looking stitches in the center and then this is round two and then this here would be round three so this is my most central point if you're looking at it that way and this would be around three so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up through this point here like that and just to pull my thread through just remember to leave enough of a tail at the end so you can knock that one off and then weave in the end when you've finished so we've gone right up through the center of the face up through round three and we now need to create the next point of his nose we're literally just trying to cover up round three really we need to bear in mind where the top of his nose is going to finish. We don't want it to come across any of that that first row in the centre. So we want it to ideally finish around here. And we're just going to be covering up these stitches in round three. So I think if we go into this one here, this one seems about right. Because if we make a straight line, you can see it doesn't go across those first row of stitches. And then we're just covering up round three here. So if we go in through here and pull that one tight like that, remember to hold on 
to the stitch at the back so it doesn't come undone. The next thing we're going to do, because remember our thread is now at the back, we need to work out um, to make this symmetrical where we are going to go up through next. So it's going to be around this point here just to make it exact. Sorry, I knocked my lighting. And then we are going to go back in down through this one. And we can see the nose starting to form. We then want to go back up through that first stitch where we started. And then just to complete the triangle, go back into the top left and you can see there we've got that perfectly equal triangle. We now need to fill this in with a satin stitch and I can show you how to do that now. So if you go back up through on the top right of the triangle we're literally going to fill this in line by line going down through using these lines as a guide so we want to go back in through there just to make that line a bit thicker and then go under slightly underneath this time so we can start to fill that triangle up and again slightly underneath and you can see now that that space of the yellow is getting slightly smaller And we're just continuing just to fill that space. Sorry, I knocked it again. I've been really clumsy the past week. I'm starting to think there's something wrong with me. I went out for a couple of um, soft drinks one night. I knocked over three drinks, I think in the space of about an hour and a half. I'm sure that's a sign of something being not quite right. But anyway, perhaps I'm just seriously clumsy. Nearly there with this one. It's quite difficult for me to do this, you know, with the phone in front of me filming and also to be able to see what I need to see. Does this look equal, do we think? I actually think that looks okay. I'm quite happy with that. There's not much of a point to his nose, I don't think. That's better. Okay, and then next thing to do after that one, and if you've got a long enough thread at the back, you can just carry on with the same one. So again, the nose will be back stitched, and that almost covers so, sort of the next round above. The next... The nose is three back stitches, so we need to kind of separate this into three really to think about where we're going to go. So the point at the top of his nose is almost the same width as his nose. So I'm going to go in through there. And I know it's three back stitches, so that is about a third. I'm then to going to go over to the other side of the centre of row one, back down through here, and then just try to repeat so that you've got it equal coming up through on the opposite side. 
oh I've lost my needle and then back in through where you've done that stitch and you should have something that looks slightly rounded for his nose I think we're doing well it seems to be going okay So I've actually gone ahead and um, also finished off the eyes and the eyebrows. The reason I've just gone ahead and done them is because it was really difficult for me to film those on camera and see where I was placing them with having it held so far in front of me. And also having a camera in between me as well. I was finding that quite difficult. So the eyes are exactly the same Um as doing the nose in the fact that you do an outline and then fill it in sort of line by line. Um, so that's filling it in with the satin stitch. And then where we've backstitched the line above the nose, I've done exactly the same for the eyes. So as you can see, mine's a slightly different to the magazine. Um, I love Disney Sumsums. So um, my face, I have copied off of the Winnie the Pooh Simpson character um, so I'm not going to do the white dots on mine I've kept my eyes quite circular compared to oval um, and I've moved the eyes down um, just a bit compared to the book I've got the the book here just bear with me if we do a side by side comparison of the two oh you can see there that my face is a lot more rounded, the eyes are rounder and positioned slightly lower and my eyebrows are higher up and my eyebrows are higher up as well. Um I personally this think that this makes it look a lot cuter. Obviously it's your decision where you decide to put everything on your final version, but I do like mine a little better. Um so there we go. That is this square all complete um that's the, the winnie the pooh face and i guess i shall see you in the next one if you have enjoyed this obviously it helps me a lot with my youtube i've got a cat being really noisy again i do apologize um it helps me a lot with my youtube if you can just leave a comment below or give this video a like um because it takes me hours and hours and hours to make these videos and you know, I'm a, a disabled person with two disabled children and so I really don't get a lot of time to myself. So if you could just show the love, that would be fantastic. Um, comments below. I want to know this week, um, who is your favourite Disney character? Just leave a comment below and I'll see you later. Bye!